Hey Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, it's May. What's going to be going on for you with the energies? And we're going to dive in with the tarot and find out. So keep watching. All right, Virgo, let's see what's going on for you for the month of May. We have a big lunar eclipse, May 5th in Scorpio. I will do a separate video on that. Yes, for all the signs, because it's that important of an eclipse. Also, Jupiter is heading into Taurus May 16th. I will do a couple of videos on that, so stay tuned. And also we have Mercury retrograde until the 14th in Taurus. And we have Venus and well, Mars is already in cancer, but we have Venus going into cancer on the seventh, which is your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams and personal gains. So there could be some interesting stuff popping in for you in the month of May. So let's see what we have going on. Virgo, we're going to start with these cards, Ace of Swords, and then we're going to pull from Eight of Pentacles, your energy. We're going to pull from another Oracle deck, Wheel, and see what else is going on. Seven of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. Wow, beautiful energies for you, Virgo. And there's your energy again, the Nine of Pentacles. Virgo, the last couple of months, we have just had amazing readings for you. I'm very, very excited for the Virgo people. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's analyze this and again, not necessarily reading this in order, but more holistically, uh, Jupiter in Taurus. Here it is, the wheel showing up in the heart of the situation. So um, ninth house for you is Taurus. So about expansion, the big picture perspective of your life, what's going to make you happy? Uh, also, because we have this ten of cups showing up here. So uh, you are in a very plumb position, it looks like, to rethink, again, Mercury retrograde in Taurus, that same ninth house, to rethink uh, your way forward with this Ace of Swords. Now, this is not anything bad. This is just, uh, this is how we use the Mercury retrograde energy, to rethink what we want to focus on and what we want to expand into with the wheel showing up here, the Jupiter. Okay, and this is deeply personal to you. It may involve two areas of your life because we have your energy showing up twice here with the Nine of Pentacles and then also with the Eight of Pentacles. So uh, Seven of Pentacles is also here. Um, and you can see she's sitting on, I love this card, she's sitting on top of the apple tree in Vermont and she is looking at the big picture perspective of her life and what is going to bring her fruition and happiness and blessings, right? So she's achieved a certain level of blessing so far. She has an apple in her in her lap, but uh, you know, <laughs> there's always a quest for more, right? That is human nature, I think. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so we have the Ten of Cups here, which yes, can be personal happiness found in relationship, um, but also can be the ultimate personal happiness because not everybody is in a relationship or wants a relationship. So apply the energies accordingly to your life with the Ten of Cups. Okay, but it's the 10, so it's the ultimate, it's the pinnacle of personal joy and happiness. So I think that you are are in this very plum position here to um, make some decisions that, as I said, are going to help expand your horizons. Um, you may have already achieved a certain level of success. The last couple of months readings seem to be indicating that. Um, but you're never one to rest on your laurels, right? You're a Virgo. You're not going to just be like, all right, that's it. Kick back. No, you know, yours is the sign of industriousness and always busy and getting stuff done, right? But you're going to be getting stuff done with joy. That's the other thing here. And also you are going to expand your horizons. I mean, I think this is a really big theme coming out in this reading. Uh, and of course, it will be a theme for you with Jupiter in Taurus. We have you, again, it's like sitting on the top of this tree, this world, right? It looks a little like a, a globe here. So again, what direction do you want to go in next? Something that is going to be a pleasant challenge. Ten of cups, a pleasant challenge. Eight of coins. It may have something to do with your work, sure, because we have the eight and the nine of coins here. But I do think it's dual. I think it's two things. I think it's something you really want to focus in on, like probably a work project, um, but also something to do with your personal paradise, maybe your home, 
maybe uh, your own business, starting your own business, improving your own business, taking your own business to the next level. I will, of course, uh, do a money career and business reading for the month of May. Stay tuned for that. Um, but this is, you know, this is the ultimate uh, paradise card, so to speak. And look at all the fruit on her head. I love this card as well. I love this whole deck. Um, so again, this emphasis of plenty, but plenty that you create through joy. I think that is the key. Okay, so whatever you're really feeling called to uh, to experience. The Ace of Swords is here. So, and in this deck, he is holding a key, or she is holding the key in their hand. Okay, so there is a new door that you're going to be unlocking for yourself. And I think there's going to be a big hint of what that is um, this month, especially as... And also in the beginning of next month, when Jupiter and the North Node meet up in this ninth house for you. Um, so, you know, Mercury's retrograde, you don't need to make any hard and fast decision now, Ace of Swords. I think it's more of setting your mind to explore the possibilities of uh, what would bring a lot of joy and expansion in your world. Okay, so this is, I mean, this is very good. Some of you, if you're waiting for news, on some sort of financial matter, whether business or personal, it looks like the news is going to be good. Um, it may have something to do uh, with your past, connected to your past in some way, because Mercury is retrograde. Um, some of you, this is a really good time to revamp, focus on uh, revamping, re-editing, redoing, writing projects, internet projects, anything to do with international business because of this Ace of Swords. So the writing and communicating and focusing on that, honing your message, whatever that means for you, especially in terms of a business, if you have one, but you're ready for something new with this wheel in your heart. You're absolutely ready for the wheels to get in motion and for to be moving in an inspired direction. So this is fabulous. And this also includes generating more finances as well. Like you want this expansion. If you've reached a certain level with your finances, you want the expansion to also continue with that. Ninth house, I'm gonna do a whole separate, you know, Jupiter and Taurus video, as I mentioned, two videos actually. So you'll get more of the intel on that. Um, but especially the ninth house also rules writing and publishing. And since we have the ace of swords there as the first energy and the eight of coins, which again is about focus, um, this is a good time for you to rethink, do I want to write a book? If I were going to write a book, what would that look like? Do I need to go back and re-edit something I already have, you know, kind of half done, um, so there may be some things going on with that as well, so that when Jupiter does go into that ninth house, and Jupiter is very friendly when it comes to writers and publishing, when Jupiter goes into that ninth house, you're ready to really focus on creating that manuscript, editing that manus manuscript, getting it published, etc. Okay, so that's another possibility with these energies. But this looks like these energies are very good for your month ahead. I love the Ten of Cups here also. Uh, there seems to be uh, maybe around the tenth of the month that's possible. Um, there could be some just beautiful, joyful, happy news, happy energy coming in. Ace of Swords is a, a harbinger of some sort of good news coming in a written communication form. So that's excellent. All right, let's see what we have. Let's see what else is going on. Virgo. We have reward yourself. Oh, beautiful. All right, we're going to clarify this with Tara also. You've been giving a lot of yourself lately. This is very Virgo. And it's time for you to receive. Yes, make the time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. This balance of giving and receiving is essential to keeping your energy, mood, and motivation at a consistently high level. Yes, I think that is also that Ten of Cups. That's also the Nine of Coins that's there as well. Like, don't forget to also enjoy the bounties. Enjoy the fruits of your labors. Okay, so that's very good. Let's... um. See what we need to know. Ariel likes to lay all over the cards and claim them as her own. Okay, let's see what else we need to know about this. Reward yourself, Virgo. Okay, make the time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. So whatever that means for you. Virgos. Virgos. All right, let's see what we have. Oops. 
Thank you, Ariel. <laughs> the Seven of Swords. The Ten of Swords. Ace of Pentacles. Two aces in this reading. And what's on the bottom? The Six of Swords, which I love. Okay. So, again, the key to this card everything's a metaphor with oracle cards for me but the key here is as it says on the bottom this balance of giving and receiving is essential to keeping your energy mood and motivation at a consistently high level okay so please do not get yourself in this state of mental burnout Seven of Swords, where you may be in denial about how badly you do need a little bit of a break, a reward for yourself. Um, and Ten of Swords, you know, you may also be having some sort of mental block in some way. Or just feeling just mentally really stuck and tired. Like you, you just, your mind needs a little bit of a break. I'm telling you, this is the Taurus energy again showing up here. There's going to be, after we get out of the retrograde, after we get out of this eclipse on the 5th, finally, when we're getting to May 16th, when Jupiter does go <laughs> into Taurus, Mercury retrograde is finished. We have a new moon in Taurus a day or two after Jupiter, when Jupiter goes into Taurus, etc., and so on. Uh, you're going to have a big seed to plant. You're going to be really investing your energy in something valuable that you want to be doing. There is something here about, I think maybe at this full moon coming up in Scorpio, to just release anywhere where you have felt mentally stuck, where the energy is not flowing. Now, yes, this may have something to do with perhaps um, some sort of energy or association that is not authentically aligned for you, that is not honest in some way, that is possible. Um, reward yourself by letting go of whatever the seven of swords, 10 of swords situation is. Um, and we do that also through, um, well, whatever the reward is going to be for you, because you're going to want to not miss out on this energy over here. So I, some of you may be facing because the full moon is showing up in this card in the seven of swords and full moons bring, uh, illumination. The full moon, like I said, I'll do a separate video on it, but it is in your third house of communications. So there may indeed be some sort of, uh, Ten of Swords is here. I mean, we can't ignore that fact. There, there could be some sort of illumination regarding somebody who really doesn't have your best interests at heart. So there could be the revelation of uh, some sketchiness, Fibonacci, as I like to call the Seven of Swords. Um, to really show you that this person is just spewing some stuff in your direction that has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with them. So there may be a kind of a little bit of a weird conversation or a conversation that really sh exactly shows you who this person is, what they're all about. Reward yourself by letting it go if you can. I mean, some, unfortunately, some relationships, like if you're co-parenting with someone, you kind of still have to have, but uh, for, you know, obvious reasons, but, um, you know, if this is a situation where you can probably release it and let it go and not deal with this anymore, reward yourself by doing that. You don't need that, that negative energy. It's very negative energy. That seven of swords, 10 of swords. You do not need that. Set it loose, cut it free. It could just be something that you've been dwelling on. That's possible as well. 10 of swords for me is stuck energy. So it could be something that you have just been fixating on and maybe telling yourself fibs about Again, is it really necessary? Can you just let it go? Reward yourself with that gift. Because again, we have maybe the start of some new uh, financial, uh, it could be a new job again with the energies that we were looking at, the eight of coins, nine of coins. You gotta get yourself clear of whatever that is. But a conversation absolutely could be involved with that. Because your energy is gonna be focused on the new, the fresh, the 10 of cups, the nine of pentacles, the wheel expanding, planting a seed where you're going to be going places. This has been a theme for you the last couple of months. You're going to be going places. There really could be somebody around you, quite honestly, who's very jealous of you with this, with this showing up and they're going to show their true colors. So put it, put it into perspective, you know, put that situation in its place, so to speak, because you got too much good stuff going on, Virgo. All right. All right. Let's pull one of these little cards and we'll wrap up our reading. I love this little deck. It's so cute. All right. It's a cute little affirmation here for you. 
from this it's a specific uh, earth sign i'm doing it because of course we're in taurus season next month we'll have an affirmation deck for air sign season all right virgos all right oh we did get this cute little lady okay we have the number 10 again it's hard to see the print on this light green but there's the number 10 omniscience and serenity practice the art of receiving abundance and you have the nine of coins see through your denial okay so again apply the energies to your life maybe all of it fits maybe just the first sentence fits practice the art of receiving abundance okay the serenity the serenity that comes when we feel totally aligned with what we're doing when we're expanding into our greatness growing into our greatness and doing wonderful things for ourselves rewarding ourselves and living and speaking our truth and being creative and focusing on things of value okay so focus on things of value which includes yourself virgo <laughs> okay which includes yourself all right virgo leave me a comment let me know what's going on for you with these energies we love you guys take care we'll see you again soon stella wild signing out uh mercury retrograde which yes has been affecting me um since i have mercury in taurus so this this mercury retrograde i've been a little more scattered than i usually am i forgot about the card on the bottom virgo the six of swords which is troubles passing away and in this deck pointing yourself in the right direction and achieving balance and harmony especially mentally so let's not forget this beautiful card that was on the bottom of the deck all right all right virgo oh look wow and the ace of wands was under that virgo you got such great energy put that seven of swords ten of swords into perspective think about how you really want to tap into the jupiter and taurus energy that'll be in your ninth house and how you want to expand your world and do brave and gorgeous new things for yourself okay all right once again we love you guys <laughs> take care i was hoping she'd meow she just meowed before take there we go okay we'll see you again soon virgo stella wild and meow. ariel can you say hi to the people thank you signing out or goodbye or hi can you say hi to the people thank you signing out or goodbye or hi <laughs>